Welcome to the Climate Conscious Podcast, where we discuss all things sustainable. I'm your host, Deval Bazi, and joining me today is Stefan James. Hi, Stefan. Hey, Deval. How are you? I'm good. How are things on your end? Things are well, you know, adjusting to the, the new norm, but, you know, pushing through with everything. How about you? Pretty much the same. Adjusting and readjusting. <laughs> So I want to thank you for joining me for episode 10 of season one of the Climate Conscious Podcast. So Stefan James is a techie, creative, serial entrepreneur, and social impact enthusiast. Through his experience launching startups, he's seen the need for more sustainable solutions. Having successfully launched and run a brand agency and sustainable travel app, He saw the need to do more to positively impact the negative effects that transportation and mobility have on the environment. As such, he created PACT, an environmentally conscious startup with a mission to build a smart mobility ecosystem while lowering carbon emissions. Stefan is a graduate with a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Sciences and also an Associate degree in Business. So, Stefan, before we get into all the exciting things that you have been involved in, yes, yes, I want to know when did you recognize your connection with sustainability? Okay, well, it's it, it's it was an interesting journey to be honest. I had launched a travel app at the time; the focus wasn't as sustainable. And through running it, I realized more and more the need to kind of shift to more sustainable travel in a way that impacted local communities. And of course, you can't think sustainability and not think environment. Yeah, so doing that research kind of led me to kind of look at, you know, sustainability bodies and governing bodies. And of course, I came across, you know, the UNDP's mission, the 17 Sustainability Goals, and, you know, just kind of looking at what the government was doing, of course, with more of the focus on the environment, I started kind of looking at, you know, carbon emissions and what, you know, what I could do. Now, I'm a solutions-driven person. Where I see a problem, I try to think of a solution. And that is how I came up with PACT. Uh, and so that evolved into its own thing, where I, f- I saw that I could actually create a bit of a movement, but also a solution that helped you know, solve a problem, but also lower carbon emissions at the same time. As part of Trinidad and Tobago's nationally determined contribution to the Paris Agreement, the transport sector is one of the areas of focus for reducing carbon emissions. It is, yes. I know PACT is about creating a smart mobility ecosystem. So can you dive deeper into that? But we saw parking as one of the low-hanging fruits that we could tackle first. Uh, of course, you know, parking is a really serious problem here. But how it relates to the issue of climate change is that just the act of searching for a parking space, especially in urban areas, it burns a lot of fuel. And having a solution that allows you to be able to pre-book, you know, or find parking spaces in real time decreases the driving time. A lot of the congestion that you actually see or pollution, air pollution within, you know, urban areas is as a result of persons making several blocks trying to find parking spaces. So PACT is very much in alignment with the concept of smart cities. Yes, it is. Uh, depending on where you look, there are several definitions of what a smart city is, but to me, it's about efficiency. Well, I worked in Port of Spain for a couple of years, and I know, well, first <laughs> of all, getting to Port of Spain is an issue, it and is. also finding a park is another challenge. Yeah, so I, I think this, this service would be very beneficial. And I guess you went, may start in Port of Spain and you would pilot it here and expand. Yes, yeah, so that's the plan. I, I never kind of think of a solution that just suits where I am. I try to create solutions that are scalable globally. Smart city in itself, you know, I, I use the term sometimes, I feel like a smart city was that. Be looking at Port of Spain as a pilot, Getting this off the ground, but of course scaling it and building on the idea requires, you know, some input from governmental bodies. 
but you spoke about efficiency. So it's pretty much just the use of different types of sensors, you know, kind of driven by what you call the Internet of Things to collect data. Right. So it's a urban area that kind of utilizes technology to collect data. And so once you get insights from that data, you could manage assets, you could manage resources, you know, you could manage your services efficiently. And so that data is also used to improve the operations across the city. So anything from smart parking, smart lighting, smart waste disposal, um, air pollution sensors, smart health smart energy, you name it, you know, even from, from the aspect of, you know, having electric vehicle charging, there's been more electric vehicles, you know, we've been seeing on the roads locally as well too, and hybrid vehicles. So having those hubs or ports where you could go, you can charge your vehicle. So the idea is really kind of to create a hub with a lot of these interconnected technologies working together to just bring more efficiency to that general area. Of course, once we start with a pilot, scaling those efforts across the country, the different areas, yeah. The thing about these sustainable development goals is that they are all interconnected. Yes. And it calls for partnerships between public and private sector to make this happen. Yeah, definitely. I think the government's role is to really put forward the policy mandate and also create that enabling environment to allow entrepreneurs like yourself Mm -hmm. to develop these systems and make it available. Yes. In our case, we've, we've had the experience of working with governmental agencies. What we've done this time around, however, is taken it upon ourselves to build a platform. So it's completely, it's already finished. And we are going to be rolling out what it is from inception. So essentially, it's going to provide users with a mobile app where they can find parking spaces ahead of time. And so it's also going to give persons that have unused spaces the ability to kind of rent out those spaces. So it's not just applicable for you know to the parking spots that we would see, you know, in and around the cities. But even residential areas for persons, it's a part of the sharing economy, basically, where persons can kind of rent out that and use space in extra money and kind of help as much as possible just reduce that congestion on the road around, you know, the highly populated areas. The teaser would be out now. And so we're just kind of getting ready to yeah, get the ball rolling. Well, I'm pretty excited for that, um, starting in Port of Spain and extending to the other cities in Trinidad and Tobago, Port of Spain, Chagonas, San Fernando, but we also have the boroughs. The push now to make a remote bit of a, a city as well. <laughs> yeah, is Chagonas a city or a borough? I think they were moving towards the city status. Yeah, it's a borough, but Chagonas is developing so much. I, I see the same thing kind of happening as I mentioned, with Arima and Chaguanas, definitely. Um, because it's ver- they are very highly, you know, populated areas and there's a lot of congestion, a lot of traffic on the roads. So we would be targeting those areas for a pilot and even outside of intervention from the government and, you know, bringing them on board. There are parking spots, there are residential spots. So it's pretty much kind of all-encompassing. Even for businesses that may have, you know, parking spots kind of allocated, that may be unused, it's an opportunity for them as well to, you know, to make some extra money with that unused space. And I mean, just kind of everybody kind of coming together to kind of play their part. So we're going to be starting with parking, as I said, but we are building an ecosystem, you know, a smart ecosystem, mobility ecosystem that is going to be creating solutions that build upon each other. And that is how, yeah, how we get to the smart city level in terms of having those solutions that that really kind of all work together to, you know, for the common good. A simple definition of smart city I came across is a city that makes better use of ICT. Yes. To improve the efficiency of its operation, the quality of life of its citizens, and to grow the local economy. Yeah. So when you speak about ICT, it's, it's a combination of, of course, you have mobile apps, you have sensors, as I mentioned before, you know, Internet of Things. So just connected devices, yeah, that could now kind of speak to each other and so gather data that would let the powers that be 
know how to change or move around. So, for instance, okay, if we're looking at parking, right? Mm-hmm. Parking, because I mean that is what practice focus on in its inception. If you have sensors in place that also kind of let you know, okay, these are the areas that a lot of the vehicles are congregating around looking for parking, and so you have an idea what that is. You could also use that data to change your traffic flows, how you design roads, you know, different things that you may put around that area more or less to kind of provide more value or efficiency. And that's just one example, All right? So the idea is not just to have the solution, but to provide the data. We want to work with governmental bodies and other bodies as well that, you know, want to partner to use that data for the common good and to use that data to kind of help build more efficient systems that, you know, take advantage of the data at hand because as I only sell business, data is like the new oil. Our policy making should be data driven. It should be data driven. How do we actually use real-time data to actually make decisions? And I, I felt, honestly, that there was nothing in place to do that. And it's a very ambitious goal, I must say. But I figured, you know, starting with parking helps get the ball rolling, starts the conversation, and get persons just mindful of the fact that, you know, a simple thing like looking for a park and circling two or three times, which I myself have found myself doing quite recently even, right? how much that actually negatively affects the environment. Yeah, so it's, it's also a mission just to kind of raise environmental awareness and get persons kind of thinking more about what little things they can do to help, you know. Yeah, I think it's a good place to start and we can see it as a soft start in the it transition is. to creating smart cities. Yes, yes. So we start with parking, but we then we extend into areas such as security, energy, healthcare, waste. Mm-hmm. You know, there are so many applications for smart cities and it's pretty exciting. And I really hope to see Trinidad and Tobago and the region, by extension, adopt these principles. So my introduction to smart cities really happened when I was in training courtesy the government of India. And they have a goal to create 100 smart cities. And I found that Mm -hmm. so interesting, the things that they were doing. Now, India is vast. 1.2 1.2 billion, that's their population. So, for example, Jaipur, which is developing into a smart city, it has a population of 3.5 million. Its priorities include its heritage and tourism, innovation and inclusion, and also enhancing quality of life in areas of public hygiene and multimodal mobility. Yes. So, I think it's important that you know you sit down and, and decide. What do you want your smart city to look like? Yeah, yeah. And what it, are your priorities? So be, other than parking, what are some priorities you see for Trinidad and Tobago? Well, for park, we're looking at smart parking, as I said first. Even speaking about smart parking, you have, yes, the use of the mobile app, contactless parking, bringing on the use of sensors, you know, so that you just scan in out. But what I am also looking into is smart waste disposal, looking at smart lighting. I think those three, in addition to having like some electric charging hubs, you know, for vehicles, is, is more or less, I guess, the first iteration of what I think could be achievable. As I mentioned before, it's a very, it's a very ambitious goal because some of these things are not cheap to implement. <laughs> Right. We are looking at, you know, some kind of collaboration or partnerships or or, or getting investment to push some of these. But definitely, I feel like that is a good start. You could even go as far as, you know, you have in New York and some of these other places, electric scooters. So now you're kind of looking at legislation or infrastructure to allow persons to be able to move around. uh, Can you expand on that? You know, so for instance, uh, outside Trinidad and Tobago, you have bike bike lanes, you have scooter okay. lanes, you have lanes or areas of the road that are very specifically designed for these this type of arm. Um, yeah, so my, mind you, if you go to to New York, bikers are riding in and out of traffic in the middle of the road normal. However, but I feel like because of legislation in place. It creates a bit more safety for them. There are things that define, okay, where you could ride, where's a safe space to ride. Looking at the current, I mean, if you just look at Independence Square in Port of Spain, 
and you could think about places riding an electric scooter to get around there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be nice. Yes. Right. It doesn't accommodate them. No, it isn't. And that's why I mentioned to you as well that Park's vision, yes, is to create a smart mobility ecosystem. There are other locations that we may be able to launch, you know, certain other measures and kind of wait for infrastructure to kind of get up to a point that we can, we could now bring it here. Right? But yeah, well, definitely it, it has a global application. Yeah, yeah. That's something we're looking to bring here. Um Smart lighting is one of the obvious uh, use cases. There's some smart lighting implementation across the country now. I've seen some use of it where you have like the solar panels and yeah. they would come on and they would come off based on movement, right? So more of that having some, you know, air pollution sensors, air monitors that we can kind of track in real time what's the quality of air and how congestion affects that. Smart waste disposal is a really big one. So where corporations and cities, city corporations especially, can kind of see in real time, you know, what bins or what areas have the most waste, you know, to prevent, pretty much to bring more efficiency to collection, right? So that you know, okay, this one is filling up, all right, you could kind of plan a, a route around that. Um, and waste disposal by itself is like a, a really big niche. I know that there are things that you could do within your own. So I know you do composting. That's something I'll be looking to as well. But from a governmental level or from a corporation level, it speaks now to the efficiency of managing waste. That by itself, we could talk about for hours. Yes, and you you can't manage what you don't measure. Exactly. And so really just what I mentioned there is like the first part of just measuring it and having some data so you know what is there. Smart waste disposal is also something that we're looking at. So I feel like looking at parking, waste disposal, street lighting, and electric charging as just the first set of things we could see implemented would be great. We're, we're on a mission to kind of make as much of them possible. Trinidad and Tobago has embarked on its sustainability transition, albeit yes. a bit slowly, but things have started moving. You know, in our discussions, it really highlights the need for investments in infrastructure. Yes, it um, is. And not just physical infrastructure, but also the human and social capital. Mm-hmm. We've been talking about diversifying, and I think this is an excellent opportunity to create a sector that can generate business and employment opportunities oh, in yeah, sustainability. Very much. When I hear smart cities, I automatically think sustainable city. Yeah, that's pretty much what it's about. Yeah, it's, it's about sustainability, bringing sustainability to you know urban areas in ways that they could run more efficiently. The technology is out there, so we need to utilize it in a way that benefits everyone. It improves the quality of life, air quality, traffic, mobility. I think our aim is to really tackle goal number eleven, which, as you as you rightfully just kind of spoke about, sustainable cities and communities. Right, and trying to see how best through the measures we are putting in place, of course, starting with parking, we could kind of help shift that. The reality is that we're not sure, quite sure what that would look like in the next five to 10 years. But as you mentioned, you know, Shannon Tobago has embarked on doing its part, affecting those sustainable development goals. So I can only hope that things would improve, you know, and that we don't move slow on this one. This is, I think there's a real opportunity there to, to kind of be one of the pioneers in the, in the region, you know, moving it towards more sustainability. I think Barbados has already kind of started a little ahead of us. Barbados and Jamaica tend to be the, the persons, you know, the, the, the countries that tend to move quickly on these things. So I'm, I'm hoping to see Sharon and Tobago catch up. Yeah, we definitely need to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stefan, we are in the midst of the election season. Let's say you were with either of the political leaders of the many parties that are contesting this general election. And you had two minutes to sell parts and get their endorsement. Let's hear it. I would say that in order to achieve the sustainable development goals, there needs to be real collaboration between private and public sector entities. And so PACT is a body that is committed to achieving the same goals 
and to kind of help achieve that mandate that the government has signed on to with the Paris Agreement. By starting with parking, we can bring a lot of efficiency to corporations in terms of managing congestion, but also tracking in real time, you know, data associated with congestion in ways that can help even filter into the way that cities are, are designed and roads are designed. There's a lot more of that data that we would be gathering and a lot more efficiency that would in turn come to urbanized areas. Stefan, an important layer of smart cities is adoption and usage. And that's yeah. where the people aspect comes in, the culture shift. For this to be successful, we would need a lot of public awareness. Yes, yes. How are you planning to address this part of it in terms of getting buy-in from consumers? So essentially, once this is, there would be a teaser out. Our choice to start with parking really speaks to a consumer pain point. From the research we've done and the market's research we've done, everybody has been like, oh my God, I will use that. You know, I need something like this. We need something like this. So without persons even realizing that they are positively affecting the environment, people are already sold on the idea. Our mission would really just be to educate. And I feel like from a human standpoint, when you're taking part in something and you know you're doing good at the same time, it's a win-win. Yeah, so through marketing, through awareness, awareness campaigns, using social media, just sharing facts in a fun way. It doesn't feel like, you know, you're being bombarded with information. We'll help persons to be more aware of little things that they could do to positively affect the environment. And it's going to be designed in a way where a little later on you'll be releasing some features that are kind of like social points as well too that could be redeemed. I'm not going to get too much into that. But the idea is also to build a bit of a community around green activities and from a parking standpoint and the other areas that we're going to be implementing. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, you get rewarded for doing social good for... Yeah. These rewards would be, you know, redeemed in a really tangible way. I'm not going to get into too much. <laughs> what I would allow is, you know, places, yes, they're getting the benefit of a parking app, the ability to pre-book parking, the ability to not have to be riding all over the place, the ability to help the environment and be rewarded for their efforts. So there's a lot that we have planned. Feedback we've gotten so far has been, has been great. Well, Stefan, you have multiple selling points. Um, you're solving the problem of parking and also reducing our impact on the environment. And in addition to that, you will be offering some incentives. So I definitely look forward to parks being launched. We look forward as well to we look forward to to launching and to you know building a community around around sustainability. I think a lot of persons don't think, they don't see sustainability as this cool thing, you know, and energy efficiency. Well, we're trying to change that. Exactly. Yeah, you know, that's what the Climate Conscious Podcast is all about. Right, as this cool thing. So now it's, we, 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 we are changing that even with our branding, the look of the app, our site, social media. We, we're going to be doing our best to change that and make persons more aware of it in a way that, they feel included. The idea is to build a community and build a movement that kind of helps push that mission forward, you know, so that persons realize, okay, in me just using this app, at least in its initial phases, I'm contributing positively to the environment. And I'm a part of a movement that is working towards, you know, establishing a smart city and understanding the benefits of that, you know, and how it positively affects your dad and Tobago. So, yeah, I think it's... um. It's, it's going to be a, an interesting journey. It sounds that way. I mean, I always say sustainability is a no-brainer when you think about it. To not take care of the environment is literally shooting yourself in the foot. Yes. It's self-sabotage. It's, what? You might say, mm -hmm. oh, I may not be around to really deal with the consequences. But we're already seeing where the effects of climate change are present with us today. Mm. We're seeing it in terms of sea level rise, coastal erosion, more intense hurricanes, especially us in this region. We are highly vulnerable. What, what we found, what we saw as well, obviously, I mean, due to COVID, is the less persons we had in the streets, the less cars we had on the road. You saw the impact it had on the environment. Yeah. And I, I mean, a lot of those 
those um, stories were hoaxes, like, for instance, the dolphins in the canals in Venice and all of that. But there was some real, even speaking about India and the Himalayas being visible, you know, because of the heavy air pollution yeah, there. air quality, for sure. And after 30 years, yeah, air quality and carbon emissions, which is a very direct contributor to climate change. So I feel like it's, it's caused persons to be a little more aware. And so as a result of that, I mean, I, all, I always see in the midst of every crisis as an opportunity and good could come out of bad situations. So I would hope that as serious as COVID is and, and grappling with that, persons are also able to come up with the realization that, okay, we need to do better, you know, from an environmental standpoint as well too. Yeah. Kind of take it upon themselves to do so. Stephanie, you describe yourself as a creative, wanderer, entrepreneur. You're also the founder and brand strategist at Liquid. Yeah. How has your entrepreneurial journey been? Oh, it's, it's, it's been a journey. Yeah, no, my entrepreneurial journey has been, it's been good. It's been rewarding. I think um, from starting, you know, coming up with a solution. So the first one would have been the previous incarnation of what liquid is now and then it was one escape which totally kind of which is a travel app i mentioned before which totally kind of threw me into the realm of a tech startup which is not at all an easy road especially if you're looking to launch that startup in the caribbean you know the many challenges you face but the, the, the road has also been filled with a lot of positive experiences and learning experiences i have to say and so Thankfully, it's led me to this point, you know, in terms of founding Pact. As I mentioned before, you know, how I came to sustainability. It would not have been possible had I not previously embarked on a sustainable travel startup. Yeah, so I think it's been a great experience because I've continued to try to launch solutions to real problems. And I feel like as long as you continue to be an advocate for change and for positive change that actually, you know, solve issues and solve real problems, you, 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 it kind of fulfills you within itself, um, knowing that you're playing a part and you're doing something, you know, to help empower people and to improve people's lives. So it's a great, it's a great feeling, but it's not like an ego thing. It's really just, I'm really just excited to see person starting to use the platform and the positive reviews that we've gotten so far have obviously helped to validate the idea. I'm, I'm really excited to see the community build and grow. Yeah. I too am very excited about the community. Um, we're bringing about change. Yes. Change that would impact us and also future generations. So I feel like we have a responsibility to ourselves and to those coming after us to, you know, leave things better than we found it. Exactly. So, yes, yes. I don't think you could have put it any better than that, to leave things better than you found it. That's, that's pretty much what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> the app is up at getpark.com. You would see a teaser out there on social media that will give you a gist as to, you know, what Park is about and it's coming soon. Uh, we're still kind of setting an official date, especially due to COVID. We're kind of looking at certain things because, of course, yes, people are moving around a lot more now, but there are still certain things we're considering. We're definitely launching the app itself before the end of 2020. As much as the first thing we're doing is a parking app, the name Parked itself comes uh, actually as a derivative from the word Parked, like as we know, P-E-R-K-E-D, uh, because of the fact that it's kind of like get green, you know, like a, a park, like a green space. Right. Um, a play on that to kind of get parked, get green, kind of think about green. And so that's really what the mission of the company is. So P-A-R-K-T. And it's, it's going to be... A weird spelling for a few people, but hopefully they get the hang of it. Stefan, I want to thank you for joining me today for this interesting discussion about smart cities and mm-hmm. the vision that you have. I wish you great success with the launch of Pact and the expansion of your app. Thank you so much. And I'll also be supporting the development of your sustainability community. Yeah, exciting times ahead. <laughs> I can't, can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sustainability is so exciting. 
Very much so, yeah, it is. It's so dynamic. For example, this would be the 10th episode and on the podcast, and I've discussed education, impact assessment, eco-entrepreneurship, waste management, sustainable mm. energy, sustainable fashion. You know, there's so many interesting themes under the umbrella of sustainability. Yes, yes. Stefan, where can listeners connect with you and learn more about PART? So you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Get Parked App. So that's G E T and Parked is spelled P A R K T, not P A R K E D. Right. So Get Parked App on Facebook and Instagram. And you can also check out our website, getparked.com. Okay, great. And I'll place the links to your social media in the show notes. Awesome. So be sure to check that out. Thank you so much for joining me on the season finale of the Climate Conscious Podcast Season 1. So guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please share and leave us a review. You can connect with us on social media. That's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Where I'll be sharing more tips on living sustainably. And you'll be the first to know when Season 2 is being launched. Thank you for listening. Bye.